now that we've created our Kahoot, we can play our Kahoot, the real fun part. So make sure you're logged into your Kahoot account, and then you can click on My Kahoots, and then we'll line them all up. So I made the McCormick History one, and I'm going to click on that, and I can edit it, I can duplicate it, I can completely trash it, or I can play it, or I can share it. So I'm going to click on Play, which will set me up in order to play it with a class. And it gives you different options here. You can do player versus player, which is if they all have their own devices, or if you're sharing devices, you can do team devices. And then it gives you a bunch of different game options. And um, these are the options that I really like doing, especially when I'm doing it in class. Uh, I always enable the answer streak bonus because kids will try to just guess in order to get more points. But if you get more point questions right in a row, you get more points for each of them. And then I also like to display the game pin because sometimes kids will get booted out or they close the tab and the pin stays on the screen. That way they can just log themselves right back in without having to stop. And then you can just click on classic and this is what the teacher sees while the game is getting started. And this is what you would project. Uh, you have this the join at kahoot.it. So kids go to kahoot.it, and that is where they would start. So I'm going to go to kahoot.it. And that way I can show you what the students see, and they see this game pin screen when you go to kahoot.it. And you can go on any device, so you can even play with a phone. Uh, all you need to go is to kahoot.it on that phone. And then you're going to take this... Uh, giant code that they give you and you're going to input that into the game pin screen for anyone and this is also how you can play on your own uh, if you want to post this link and I'll show you how to get that later on you can have kids split screens if they don't have two devices where if you have a phone and a computer uh, here you're going to be projecting what's on the left uh, and then you'll notice that when I put in my nickname, uh, it pops up and you can delete kids uh, because kids will try to make crazy names uh, and you can kick them out and make them put real names in. And then you can see how many people have logged in to make sure you have everyone and then hit start. So on the left hand side is the screen that's projected. Uh, that's your main screen. It gives you the question first and it gives a little countdown. And then the kids see on the right hand side the four different matching symbols. And if they pick, uh, the quicker you pick, the more points you get. And after each question, it gives you a total of who picked what questions, which one was the right one, and then a leaderboard of the top five kids. It'll tell you like who's gotten ones in a row, who's the, like the highest jumper, or the highest, the most improved from the last one. And then uh, you just click the next question and it'll go through. Uh, kids don't ever really get to see who's at the bottom, which is really beneficial. Um, you would, the kid would know because it'll tell them like you're in 17th place. Uh, so they can figure that out. Uh, if they get it wrong, they get a red X. Uh, if you sit behind kids while they're doing this, it's actually really easy to tell who's getting questions right and wrong because the correct screens will turn green and the incorrect screens will turn red. Uh, so it's pretty easy. It's a really cool classroom management technique to figure out who's getting things right or wrong right while you're playing. And once you finish, uh, it gives a little podium of whoever got the first, second, and third place. It'll tell the kid if or whoever, like if they got top five. Uh, and then once you finish it, the kids can rank it uh, and they can say how much they like the game, uh, which I would never really ever do that part. Uh, I usually just skip directly to where I can then see different results. Uh, one of the cool parts is they invented ghost mode, which means you can play the game later on. You can go back into your cahoots and you can put ghost mode on and it puts the kids original scores in there. So you can do a pre-assessment and a post-assessment, uh, introducing a topic and reviewing for it, and the kids can see if they can beat their own scores. And then you can also review the results. If you hit save results, you can save the results directly to your drive. Uh, it opens up as an Excel spreadsheet, which you can make sheets if you want it to, uh, but they look very similar. It gives you a whole bunch of data on a whole group breakdown of questions. Uh, it'll give you a breakdown of individual questions. It'll give you a breakdown of individual kids. Uh, and it's really beneficial to be able to see um, looking down a row or looking down a column and seeing a whole bunch of red, whether it's one question that kids are having uh, trouble with or it's uh, a, a one kid that has them to be having trouble with everything. Uh, so you can kind of see really good data that's usable from there directly from the results at the end. And then you can uh, go back to it and you can always share this with kids. You can either type in individual names, which you might not want to do. Instead, click on the link to the game and it'll give you this page. And there's a blue link here that you can copy and then you can paste that into different places like on Google Classroom. Uh, kids can then go all home and click and it'll actually tell you how many times the game's been played. Uh, so it'll say like the game's been played like 72 times. You know that kids are really playing it to review for the test.